Okay. Okay, just want to make sure that uh, we're going to get started here. So soon, so presentation uh, today. Uh, you want to share your uh, your presentation, Michelle and Danielle? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Because I don't have the title of your presentation in front of me right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> and my paperwork is getting spent. Yes, yes, we went the wrong way. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've got lessons for faculty designed to build, and this is Texas State University, correct? And I've got Michelle yeah. Daniel here. Uh, just to let you know that everyone is muted, as usual. If you have any questions, comments, or something, please use the questions box that you see at the, on the right side. Session will also be recorded and available later on on the YouTube Ethereal channel. And uh, as usual, if you have any problems with the video or audio, just let me know in the uh, question box right now. And I will let Danielle and Michelle get started. All right. Well, thank you. Welcome to Lessons for Faculty, Design to Build. You, My name is Michelle Reed, and I'm presenting with Danielle Hennington. You need to stop your and we are from Texas State University. You may I'm sorry? To, you may want to go full screen. It looks like you're going on to the presenter mode here. On your presentation. If you know what I'm I mean. sorry. Yeah, what we're seeing. Are you not seeing this in full, in full screen? That is correct. Yes. Are you looking at that screen? Are you looking at? Um, hold on. We can see the notes. Uh, there we go. We're good. Okay. All right, we got it. All right, good deal. All right. <laughs> A little technical difficulty, right? Um. All right, so uh, for about 12 years, the instructional designers here at Texas State have been uh, helping instructors to apply instructional design principles to create and build both hybrid and totally online courses using the Sakai Collaborative Learning Environment, which here we refer to as TRACS. Generally, through the guidance of their personal instructional design consultants, instructors go through a two to three semester long, three phase design, development, and build cycle with the creation of formative evaluations to use as potential revisions to the course as needed. Extensive feedback is provided at each stage. Um, for, those of, for those who are building their courses as a part of a larger programmatic uh, migration to online delivery, their ID consultants stay with them through that third semester and the uh, initial implementation of the course to help the instructor run and analyze the data from that field test. So this follows the general ADDI industry model for instructional design, which of course uh, should be considered cyclical, not linear. After the initial steps of analyzing their audience, like whether they have traditional or non-traditional undergrads or masters or doctoral grad students and general needs, including identifying their course topics, instructors began planning their courses by aligning course objectives, non-graded activities to uh, graded activities. These non-graded activities are used to help students be successful in the assessments of the objectives. Next, the instructors are guided to use their planning matrix to begin designing their course using our tracks design document. The participants begin to flesh out their plans by adding student ready language and uh, for introductions and directives for the lessons themselves and then again within the forums and assignments and quizzes. Additionally, if they're using the lessons tool rather than learning modules, the participants begin to prepare for building and tracks by identifying the type of tool that uh, is needed to make each section an entry in, in the lessons. Ultimately, the layout within the right column will match how the uh, lesson will look in tracks. Again, feedback from the consultants is provided via comments in the MS Word track changes utility directly in the document and via uh, individual consultations. This document is an easy way for ID consultants to give feedback and for participants to make changes before actually building their courses. So in this example, you see a single lesson using the lessons tool in which an introduction uh, has been added along with the objectives for the lesson and directives for adding resources, uh, a quiz, and a discussion. Each of these sections at the top simply utilizes the add text tool. I've even added the JPEG pictures, uh, or I've even added JPEG pictures. 
uh, through the add text function. At the bottom, I've provided links to the resources and provided quizzes and discussion forum titles. Typically, we ask instructors to build their content in forms, assignments, and assessments before putting it all together in lessons. This way, all they have to do is link to the existing content. So in this example, you see the other half of the Trex design document, which has instructors providing student-ready language uh, for these tools to be added at the content pages itself. So finally, instructors use their completed tracks design document in the third phase to guide their building as they create their course and tracks. Feedback is given through the consultation and written notes, and building we find is faster and easier when they have uh, the content finalized in the tracks meeting uh, or the tracks design document. So in this example here, you see how we've taken it from the tracks design and how it looks very similar to what we have in the uh, actual build. So the instructional designers at Texas State um, have been using this process for some time, as I noted before, with individual instructors um, as they sought to build entire online programs or individual courses. And last fall, the group piloted a new created, newly created hybrid course for additional faculty interested in creating online courses using the same pre-phase and evaluation process just described, focusing on the build through the lessons tool. An important impetus for creating this professional development was to meet a new Southern Association of Colleges and Schools, or SACS, requirement to provide appropriate institution-approved training for online instructors. By providing the professional development, more participants would gain knowledge and practice in designing and building hybrids and fully online courses which align with Texas State University's best practices checklist for online courses. This was created to demonstrate instructor skill and readiness for a delivery course uh, to SACS. So this course audience consisted of both foundational participants, instructors who were interested in learning the instructional design theories uh, to building online courses, and they got to practice within a single lesson within tracks. And then a group of advanced participants, instructors who would be building an entire course in tracks for delivery uh, as early as the following semester. The foundations portion of the course lasted four weeks, while the advanced section lasted 15. Advanced participants had to have departmental approval for participation, and they received a course release for the semester to focus on their learning and uh, production. And then additionally, participants did receive a small stipend for their completed participation. There were 15 foundations participants and three advanced participants who took part in the uh, pilot of this professional development. So some of the overarching goals uh, for the course included, obviously, completing an online course development task following the best practices uh, described in the Texas State Best Practices Checklist, learning about general issues related to teaching online, collaborating with peers and exchanging ideas, feedback, uh, looking at each other's sites, evaluating the quality of, of his or her own course using uh, the best practices checklist, and then of course successfully using the tracks tools uh, such as lessons, forms, and assessments and assignments to develop a course. So the course implemented a stacked approach for layering, layering a group of foundation participants who I've already noted would move through this three-phase uh, process for a small portion of the course they plan to build, while the advanced participants would continue on and build an entire course that was ready to launch the following semester. So the course provided a great deal of Friday weekly meetings uh, that alternated between face-to-face -face and online, which we used or did in Adobe Connect, um, with a final opportunity to share in the uh, fourth week here. As foundations were leaving, they shared uh, their lesson. And then uh, in the 15th week where the advanced students uh, shared amongst themselves as well. These meetings were instructional. The other meetings were instructional in nature, and it prepared participants for the next week's activities. So for example, in week three, participants met to learn more about moving from the planning matrix to the track design uh, document. At times, particularly during the planning matrix and tracks design document stages, participants were provided with lab time to work directly with instructional designers. So after the fourth week, uh, advanced participants, as I said, continued to work individually with their ID consultants and as groups, uh, meeting 
every other week with their instructional designer and then every other week in group meetings. So the advanced students uh, work through their phases, uh, their, their three phases in three stages, dividing their courses into thirds, uh, first to work on their content and then to work on their design and then finally to work on uh, the build. And uh, like I said, this was repeated uh, at least three times during the, uh, the remaining semester. So there were also some, throughout, there were some additional webinars, uh, some of which were optional, um, and lessons which included a variety of topics related to hybrid and online learning. And uh, they were offered throughout the course. These included uh, strategies for hybrid courses, uh, uh, a two-part uh, sessions on online discussions, and a two-part uh, sessions on online collaboration, managing an online course and still having a life, uh, rubrics and cases in online teaching and in many of these cases we had uh, faculty who had been a part of our training before come in and, and talk to students too. So the remainder of this session focuses on the specific strategies we employed to train instructors during this hybrid professional development to use lessons including a pre-recorded mini lecture, self-guided online exercise, and the tracks design document completed by the participants. So. With that, I'll hand it over to Danielle. Okay. So just to give you a little background about um, our faculty and our university, um, when we started this process getting our, our uh, training ready for lessons, um, very few of our faculty on campus were familiar with lessons. So um, any of the faculty that we had uh, we're using learning modules or resources to deliver content. So we knew right off the bat that we had um, a, a base of very few faculty being familiar with the tool. Um, so we were trying to figure out what to include in our training. So we had had some experience with an early adopter of lessons as a tool. Um, we worked with her for a full semester and she had a very complex course that she was uh, putting out um, that was a hybrid course mm -hmm. and in the development of that course there were uh, we included um, a multi-layered course that had several um, sub pages but it also had several instances of lessons along the side navigation and through the process of developing that course with her we learned a lot about what a challenge it was going to be to help novice users understand navigation, help novice users understand um, how to introduce new tools into uh, a lessons page. So we learned quite a bit about working with novice users by working with this early adopter. As a result, we, just, we made some decisions about what to include in our training for our faculty in our course and we decided to make some decisions uh, which were to focus on limited use of sub pages um, for training purposes or to avoid them altogether if possible and then also to teach faculty to create multiple instances of lessons along the side navigation instead of having them use one instance of lessons on the side navigation with multiple sub pages. So the next step in the training process was to give them a multi-layered approach to the training. The first thing we did was we, we created a pre-recorded mini lecture. Then we took them into a guided online exercise. And then we gave them an in-class hands-on exercise, including the tracks design document. And we also offered them some additional support through one-on-one -on -one tutoring, open lab support, and then if they weren't able to come into online one-on-one -on -one tutoring or um, open lab support, we also did some synchronous um, Adobe Connect support. So more specifically, in the mini lecture, um, the first thing we did was we started looking around to see what other people were doing with lessons and we found an excellent, uh, excellent example of a real high level overview of lessons um, with the Center for Instructional Technology at Duke University and with permission we adapted their script and created a five minute video that gave, us an, that gave an example of how lessons was used in the course. 
Um, we uh, used descriptions of what the menu bar items were for and how they're used in a course. And the goal of that mini lecture really was to give our students a big picture view before they began their hands-on self-guided exercises. The next thing we did was we gave them a self-directed, downloadable, step-by-step -step, um, homework that took them through the basic tasks that they were going to need in order to be successful using lessons. We asked them to locate and upload files. We asked them to add and format text. We asked them to upload images, create hyperlinks, link to multimedia and documents. And the goal of this exercise, this self-guided exercise, was to guide them to the simplest way to use the tools in preparation for the in-class work and for the build that it was going to be coming later on. And finally, we asked them to do their tracks design document. And we talked about that a little bit earlier with Michelle. The tracks design document we walked through together in class, and we also began working on it together in class through a guided lab. And then we asked them to finish that in their own time outside of class, and then they handed it in as an assignment. And the purpose of the tracks design document was for them to work through that, think about the translation from their planning document to this document that was the student facing language and it was in preparation for the build. But it also gave the ID team an opportunity to provide them with very specific feedback, not only on the instructional design part, but on the, the design plan and to give them some guidance about any questions that they might have about lessons before they actually took the time to start building in the lessons tool. Um, and just to remind you, we do provide them with the access to the one-on-one -on -one tutoring. We did give them open lab support if they ran into trouble with lessons and as they began building uh, out their course. So uh, with that, we'll hand it back to Michelle. So, um, Several lessons were learned through the experiences and the participant surveys that um, were given weekly and then again at the end of the foundation section and about midway through the advanced section and then again at the end of the advanced section. Um, as called for through any instructional design model, these lessons uh, will be informing uh, our redesign and our subsequent delivery of future iterations of the workshop. So some of these lessons included, um, we found as might have been expected, a very broad range of technical abilities among uh, the participants. Some were very comfortable with tracks, others uh, were not. Some uh, were very comfortable with technology and learning technology, but others uh, were much more timid. Um, several faculty uh, who had experienced both thought that lessons was easier to learn and use than learning modules, uh, which I guess is also known as Malik's. I, I only know it is uh, learning <laughs> modules, but yes. Um, we had uh, some mixed success with the self-paced exercises. Um, many faculty didn't complete them and it caused issues when they came back uh, to do exercises that really needed success from the self-paced exercises before them. Um, some faculty who completed all of the training materials we found still had some key misconceptions that that we tended to address one-on-one. -on -one. So for example, the concept of constructing pages and chunks using different tools uh, came up about a bit confusing for some. Uh, but with further explanation, um, again, sometimes just one-on-one, -on -one, for the advanced students, things went more smoothly. So we also found that the tracks design document was a useful tool for both participant designing and instructional design feedback. Through the cycles of work and feedback, uh, some issues were detected by the ID consultants in the tracks design document uh, that highlighted these misconceptions about the various tools before they actually started building in, in tracks. So this resulted in a cleaner end product. Uh, most of the faculty came to believe that the tracks design document, that while time consuming, uh, did make the build process easier and in general it helped faculty to organize their ideas. Overall, faculty liked the look and feel of lessons, and uh, 
Overall, faculty felt that they were now prepared to design and build online uh, course materials. So what implications have we uh, garnered from this information? We uh, know that uh, we need to add some accountability for the self-paced lessons, just as you would in any flipped model course. Uh, we know that we may need to add some more guidance um, on how to fill out the lesson tools column of the tracks design document. We've realized that we need to adjust the calendar for working uh, on the tracks design document and the building. We need to broaden that time. Um, this would allow for more time uh, for the participants to take advantage of the one-to-one -one sessions that we offered. And then, uh, of course, we trust that the new UI uh, improvements that are planned will address the issues that confounded some of the learning process. So uh, that brings us to the end of our presentation. Did you uh, have any questions? Uh, it's Christian here. Uh, I don't look like I've got any, any questions in the queue here. So uh, if anyone wants to, <coughs> you can maybe just unmute them all together to can ask the questions. Just raise your hand and I'll give you uh, the voice. Doesn't look like we have any questions. We were that clear. You got it. <laughs> Incredible. Huh? I've got a question here. Uh, can you make the T? Whoops. Let's see here. Okay, I've got some questions coming in here. Like, can you make the TDD available for other Sakai institutions? The tracks design document. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, we can. Okay, so uh, it'll be on the uh, Sakai site? Yes, yes. Cool. And I've got, how many faculties have you trained using this three-step process? Well, overall, I, I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> In the over 12 years. Over 12 years. They've been doing it for a long time. We are a relatively new in institution. Um, so, uh, if Liz is listening in, Liz Strand, she's also uh, part of Texas State University. She may be able to provide the answer to that question. So you might check the, the scrolling questions. There, Liz. Uh, uh, I can give her the voice. You think she'll be okay if I unmute her? Uh, sure. I, I think she's anticipating the possibility. I think she would appreciate that. <laughs> Liz, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Great. Well, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. So what was the question again? Um, so the question you had originally posed to us was over the course of this decade, how many faculty have we trained? Using uh, this three-step process, right? Yep. Oh, good question. Um, you know, I don't really have the answer to that. We. Um, probably started doing faculty development about five years ago or so. We started very small with just one session per year and now we're up to six per year. So currently uh, we are planning to get as many as 82 faculty through the different training sessions that we offer. Uh, but we started initially with just 12 to 16 faculty. Uh, so we're, we're ramping up big time right now uh, just due to mostly to the demand for faculty development for you know online teaching and hybrid course teaching. Was that it? Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see here. Um, there's, an, just give me a second here. I'm okay. I'm still unfamiliar with the lessons tool. Where can I find the getting started with lesson video? Uh, I am not really privy to the, I, I am very new here. So there are still some uh, policies that I'm not very familiar with yet. 
But you uh, Liz, do you have an answer to that question about access for our track design document came up earlier and the and the mini lectures? Some of them are asking if they can have access to that. Uh, access to mini lectures on the lessons tool. Uh, I think we just have that one. Isn't that correct, Danielle? Right, we do and, have one. Right. And sure, we can share that. Yes. And also, you can find some very helpful ones from uh, the Center for Instructional Technology at Duke University as well. Great. And I saw uh, also, if it's just about the lessons tool, I think you can just search on YouTube. You'll find a lot of resources talking about the tool and demonstration also. Uh, yes, absolutely. Let's see here. And I've got another one. And what were, what were the desired lesson design enhancements? I'm sorry, ask again? And what were the desired lesson design enhancements? The ones that we made reference to at the end of the presentation. Uh, UI improvements. Well, the person that added that's not here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, those those UI improvements are being implemented by uh, Marist College or University. They're spearheading that currently, and uh, they're particularly focusing on improving uh, the, the interface of lessons because it's currently kind of clunky. Uh, as far as what those are, I think you'd have to check with Marist to see. Uh, I think they're, they're currently getting uh, some information about what those recommended improvements would be. Uh, so they're they're kind of in the early stages right now. Okay. I'll move on to the next question. How many concurrent participants do you manage per a certain term, or do you have a certain term to manage at a time? So within the professional development or the other programs? We actually have two other programs as well. That's all I've got right now. Uh, so I'm going to ask the person to add to the question if they can at the bottom, and I'll come back to it later. Uh, let's see here. Well, I can answer the question about the professional development. So with the uh, professional development, we had 15 additional uh, 15 foundation students that took just the four-week uh, portion of the course and they got to practice building uh, one lesson through that three cycle uh, stages, phases. And then we had three in this pilot program that were advanced students, but we are getting ready to uh, roll this out again in the uh, spring and we have nine advanced students signed up for that, and I actually don't know the total for foundations. Liz, Six, might have that Sixteen. Sixteen. So it'll be sixteen. Uh, they'll go through the four weeks, and then an additional nine that will carry on from there. Right. Next question was that: Is it possible to share your five minutes video for helping faculty to use lessons? I think we talked about this before. Correct. If, the video for sh lessons. Liz is going to have to make the call on what, what we can share. Yes. Fine. And if you can, the information will be on the uh, Sakai site. Uh, Absolutely. How about, yes. uh, how about the percentage of the faculties who completed the course? In this pilot program, I believe all of them completed it. Definitely all three of the advanced completed it. Good. How much time do you allow to new hires for the training? Uh, well, I came in in the middle of it and did one training on Adobe Connect. Danielle has been here for almost two years, so she was I had a much more integral uh, part in that professional development. I'm taking on more next semester uh, when I've been here for six months or more, so I, I'm not sure if that completely answers your question. 
Are you talking about new, newly hired faculty members? Yeah, I would I would think so, yes. It doesn't say it here, but I would guess so, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I misunderstood the question. <laughs> so, so, Liz, uh, do you want to field that one? Uh, can you uh, the question repeat it? Is, yeah, it was how much time do you allow to new hires for the, for the training? So, do you have three months, two months? I how think much? what they're looking for is how long do they have to have been here before they can take the professional development. Oh, uh, they can take it immediately as soon as uh, they start working at Texas State. Okay. As long as they get the permissions from their from their chair or their department, right? So the other one is like, did I understand correctly that the training is mandatory for your faculty? Go ahead, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> You're asking if uh, this is mandatory training? Yep. Yes. Uh, it is now. Uh, they have to take at least the four-week foundations course to satisfy requirements for training, but this is a brand new requirement and previously there was there was no, uh, there was not an expectation that faculty have any training uh, to teach online. Okay. The other one is, uh, let's see here. Uh, and what happens to those who cannot fit into the time frame? Do they get an extension? So you name Typically not. We try to uh, work with the faculty to make sure that they have the course release that they need um, because we do tell them and their chairs up front that they that this the work that they're doing in this professional development is the equivalent to teaching a course. And so we uh, require that they have a, a course release in order to do so. And then um, as we're going through applicants and, and uh, choosing who will be a best fit, we look for potential conflicts um, in schedules. But, but we do offer the course multiple times in the year so that right. they have an opportunity to if this, if they do not, if their schedule doesn't permit them to take it in the fall, they have another opportunity in a different time in the year to take the course. Right. So they can even take foundations now and then take advance later. Okay. Uh, next question is, uh, it's more like a faculty uh, instructional design question here. As you link to other tools within the lesson page, do you still make other tools available when using the lessons tool? Yes. Yes. Easiest question so far, good. Um, <laughs> do you use the guy with your faculty to teach your tracks methodology? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Do you use Sakai with your faculty to teach your tracks metho methodology? Yes, actually, um, so this professional development is a hybrid uh, professional development with those meetings that that I told you about on Fridays, but the rest of it is all uh, online using the Tracks Lesson Tools. Okay. Okay. Uh, your training sessions looks very comprehensive. It does sound quite time consuming. Uh, how do you encourage faculties to come to your course? Well, it's mandatory. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so as Liz pointed out, it's becoming increasingly mandatory uh, by, by SACS, um, just the foundation portion of it. Uh, but I think that, that faculty talk to each other and talk about what a great experience they have because as they move through the advanced uh, course uh, professional development, they get a lot of one-on-one -on -one help from the instructional designers. Okay. I believe that's it. I think it's all the questions here. I'll just give it a second or so to see if anyone wants to add one. We have a little more time left if there's more questions coming in. And I think we're good here. So, uh, well, thank you, Danielle, Michelle, and Liz. And, uh, You're welcome. <laughs>
<laughs> like the application, like I mentioned before, will be available on YouTube, uh, the on the Aprio Channel YouTube, YouTube Aprio Channel. I'm gonna say it correctly <laughs> later on. So, uh, 